a world where everything that happens on the space rock just has to become a movie? This is just one of those events that could have been so good to see as a movie if they just waited a little bit longer to actually create a good story. But no, Hollywood cockroaches need to bumper car their way to be the first one in line and just make something that is simply fine. And I'll explain what I mean, but if you don't know, Dumb Money is a movie directed by Craig Jalipsy and stars Paul Dano who plays an internet personality named Keith Gill who also goes balls deep into his life savings to buy GameStop stock, tell everyone in the world about it through the internet, then make everyone buying that stock and get rich while the people who are already rich can bathe in dust because they are losing billions. Now, as you can tell, this is based on the true story of the massive GameStop disco party that happened in early 2021, where a bunch of rich people essentially bet that GameStop stock would fail in the future. However, when a Reddit forum named Wall Street Bets, alongside Keith Gill spearheading everything, saw all this go down, they all decided to buy into the GameStop stock, then Falcon punched the price to go to the moon and make all these rich bozos lose out on all of their money. And this story is super interesting and funny, and would have been fair to see something like this in a big Hollywood movie, but now Hollywood wants to rush these things and pump films faster than squeezing out orange juice and force us to wait multiple years for a better version of the story. Now granted, this movie could have been a lot worse, but also could have been a lot better. Because as I said, this movie is just fine. This is literally something you would see on Netflix, but instead this was released exclusively into theaters in the middle of the damn strike and made zero money back. But look, here's the reason why it's fine. So the film is being carried not by the main story, but the journeys that the characters go through. However, there are so many characters in this film who are all experiencing the GameStop Yahtzee at the same time, and as a result, the movie flip-flops between them to see how they are doing. And the reason why I like this is because we get to see the perspectives of everyone in this situation and how impactful it is to different people. For example, we get to see the perspective of students, of doctors, the rich billionaires, and even a GameStop employee. The issue, however, is that since there are so many characters, it is constantly throwing information at your face and on top of that, giving you information about the financial gibberish going on with GameStop. In other words, there's just too much going on, which means there are going to be characters that you may not like because they are underdeveloped, which means that the movie could have benefited from a longer runtime, especially considering that dumb money feels very quick. So if the movie already has great pacing, just continue that train for another 30 minutes and maybe tell us a little bit more about these characters other than letting us know that they made some new money and now they can pay off their student loans or pay their mortgage. Like, show us more about their lives. Another thing I want to say is that if you know nothing about money or stocks, this movie is going to be an absolute chore. Finding the one piece is going to be easier than figuring out the money language in this movie because they pass around so many key terms like short squeeze and SEC that either don't get defined or they just swiftly glance through it. So whenever the film gets nuts to butts in the finance aspect of it, it may be a struggle if you're not paying attention. However, what it does do a good job of is making a mockery and showing how vile rich people are. Because it made me really not like the sneaky schemes that these guys tried to do to get more doubloons in their already deep pockets. And it's also really fun and funny to see how miserable these guys get when they start losing billions of dollars. Additionally, the cast in this film was fantastic. Everyone in this movie acted their boogers off and also put up natural performances. And in my opinion, the best written character is Seth Rogen's character. Because he is someone who is betting on GameStop's demise, but at the same time, he's not a mustache twirling villain. He has a family, he seems like a good guy, but is just doing what billionaires normally do, which is prey on the poor, which makes him a little bit realistic. But the best performer was Paul Dano. His character is very run-of-the-mill, but his acting and reserved nature is always a treat. But overall, even though I didn't understand the details of what was going on, I understood the emotions of what was going on. And even though it was tough to keep track of everyone's journey in the film, I still wanted to know how this Mario Party ended for all of these characters. So if you like biopic finance movies, this is for you. But if you like comedic, fast-paced, star-studded, and well-acted movies, this is also for you. But if the studio had some patience, this could have appealed to everyone. Three and a half stars.